So obviously the main reason why someone would want to use a flame retardant foam in a battery pack is to help the fires, right? If a cell were to go off, preventing it from going to the other cell, which essentially protects the majority of your pack. Apart from that, there are several benefits for the even protect foam family. One of them is the structural performance, NVH. There are some customers of ours that use this material, not so much that they care about the propagation performance. Yeah. They do care about that, but without our foam, they actually don't pass vibration testing. Hi, I'm Joel Frankie. I'm here in Detroit at the Battery Show, and I'm here with Jermaine from HP Fuller. Can you tell us what is the history of EV Protect Foam in a capsulite? Yeah, so our EV Protect Foam really started from a need in the industry, something that was lightweight so that vehicles and batteries had more range of motion. You can get more out of your charge. Uh, and so our product line kind of started from development based on what customers were really asking for. So we started with a product called ED for Tech 4006. Okay. It was our first product. Uh, we call it semi-structural. So it's kind of soft, but it's great. So it fills a lot of the cavities as liquid and then rises, it covers everything over. As we went to market with that product and we're getting a lot of traction, the industry is always changing. So we had a need, customers were having a need for a more structural material, mm -hmm. right? So a foam that was more harder, harder to press. And so what this does is provide structural rigidity. And so for applications where it's sell the pack, sell the chassis, it essentially allows you to remove some of the components like metal parts, plastic structural parts, and replace it with a lightweight foam. So that's when we started developing our EV Protect 5006, our EV Protect 5008, uh, and an even more structural version, our EV Protect 5009. So all of them are in that kind of polyurethane foam, lightweight, helps stop thermal propagation from going to the next cell, uh, but still good, provides good structural rigidity. And that's really just us answering to the market. Okay. Are there any other benefits to using EV Protect in a battery that you haven't listed? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And okay. We appreciate you asking. So obviously the main reason why someone would want to use a flame retardant foam in a battery pack is to help the fires, right? If a cell were to go off, preventing it from going to the other cell, which essentially protects the majority of your pack. And then also, right, in an instance of say there's a customer or someone in a vehicle, it allows them to safely escape. Okay. Apart from that, there are several benefits for the even protect foam family. One of them we kind of alluded to is the structural performance. So NVH, there are some customers of ours that use this material, not so much that they care about the propagation performance. Yeah. They do care about that, but without our foam, they actually don't pass vibration testing. Okay. So it helps really unitize the system. And then also we find that, especially for packs where it's going to be either in a really hot environment or a really cold environment, the foam, since it's surrounding everything, helps really maintain somewhat of a constant temperature. Does it act as an insulator? Kind of, exactly. Okay. So there's less of an issue, right, where customers say, okay, in the wintertime, my range is terrible our foam helps kind of bring that back into a more constant scale. How does EV Bond 7, 775 improve cycle time and reduce scrap of battery manufacturers? Yeah, EV Bond 775 is a product that we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. It's a reactive hot melt product. So reactive hot melts have been pretty widespread in the adhesive industry in general. And for us to bring it into the battery market was something that we were very excited to do. So what it does is that it helps with various bonding. So we've seen it very successful in the mica bonding to say the lid or an enclosure. Okay. But then also in applications like this, where we're bonding the cells to a cooling tube. Okay. And so what this does in improving cycle time is, for example, if I'm taking the mica to the lid bonding, a lot of times people are using tape for this. So what this means is that an adhesive 
gets applied onto a foam table at say a third party, and then that goes to the customer and gets applied. So we're taking out that middleman, which helps save cost and also time. And also when you spray apply this, once you instantly quirk your parts together, you're able to move down the line. So cycle time wise, we're increasing performance and output at our customers. Okay, excellent. What are the benefits of EV Therm 288 versus traditional silicone gap fillers? Yeah. So we've been seeing that a lot of, especially big OEMs, want to get away from silicones in general. Uh, sometimes they're not even allowing them into their facility, but gap fillers. So we think of gap fillers really as materials that have thermal conductivities, you know, of two, three, four, uh, super high for that kind of heat transfer. Our EV Therm 288 comes in as a great option because it has a, a thermal conductivity of 2.1 watts per meter Kelvin. That's a very high thermal conductivity, but it's what we call uh, an MS polymer. So it's modified silane, which means there's actually, it's not silicone, it's silicone free, which is fantastic. And so what that means is that you're getting really a lower density, but then also really good wet out. So sometimes we have people say, well, why doesn't HP Cooler, why aren't you marketing a material that is free or four watts per meter Kelvin? What we find is that materials that have higher thermal conductivity or we call bulk thermal conductivity, the material itself, it doesn't always outperform a material like our EV Therm 288. Interesting. In fact, we've seen direct comparisons where our 288, because of the wet out, the lower density, is able to really get good interfacial contact between the two parts that it's trying to tra like bridge the gap mm -hmm. and it outperforms higher bulk thermal conductivity materials a lot of times which are silicones. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So how are HP Fuller's adhesives supporting new battery designs like Cell the Pack? Yeah, this is a great question. So with Cell the Pack or even say self chassis, cell the body. What we're finding is that people want to reduce the amount of components in their battery pack. And obviously the reason for that makes a lot of sense to us, right? So one, it saves their costs. There's less componentry or in their bill of materials, there's just less for them to handle. But then also it helps reduce the weight. If I'm thinking about plastic parts or metal parts that are healthy with kind of the structure of the material, if I can take those out, then I'm reducing the weight significantly. And so we've really designed a lot of our materials to help facilitate that transfer that we're seeing in that shift in the industry. So it'll happen from providing materials that are transferring this larger cell format. A lot of times we're seeing like these big 4680s with a 4695s in these cell to pack formats. So adhesives that help bond them to their cooling tubes, uh, encapsulating them and protecting these larger energy dense cells obviously have more power behind them. Sure. So creating encapsulating foams that are lightweight, structural, but then also making sure that we're from still preventing thermal propagation with these different cell factors. Uh, and then also making materials for, for sealing the higher like thermal conductivity materials, both structural and the gap filler really helps, I think, with a huge mass for like, say, cell to pack, cell to chassis, but we want to have efficient heat transfer. And I think our, all our materials are designed to be so. Excellent. Now the people at home, they're watching this later. Can you let them know where they could find out more about all the things you talked about? Yeah, absolutely. So if you go to hbfuller.com slash EV, you'll be taken right to our ePower and storage page, which we have a lot of literature and a lot of links to say to our LinkedIn page that you can find more information and really just learn about our team. Awesome. Thank you, Jermaine. Yeah, thank you for your time, right, Joe. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. All right.